This is Era Me, Mayor Quimby. A court order has forced me to provide you, the people of Springfield, with public service announcements, such as this promotion for the Oliver Harper Podcast, available now on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, and Android. Subscription is free, unlike membership to the Stonecutters. Shut up! And you will enjoy hours of entertainment and occasionally insightful content. Don't delay. Subscribe today. Hello, everyone. It's Oliver Harper here, and I'm back with Brad Watson. How do you do, sir? I'm good, thank you. Excellent. Now, today, me and Brad are going to be discussing the never-ending story. Yay! (laughs) Now, I did a retrospective on this ages ago, and I thought, well, Brad's here today as we're recording some... uh, stuff tomorrow with Richard and uh, as I have some free time with him let's squeeze in the never ending story a classic from 1984 there's always time to squeeze in the never ending story exactly it's quite a short movie as well so folks remember it's an audio commentary not a video but if you wish to sync it with your own copy of the film put the timestamp to zero and press play now Now this was like as a kid this was uh, very much on TV all the time we went to the Quite, we, I think we rented it as well when it was basically uh, yeah, when it, when it, it was wasn't, it was when it a, wasn't on TV. Yeah, <laughs> so, it was a summer holiday rental for me all, all the time. Yeah, yeah, and it was because uh, obviously the, the, with some of the scenes later on the movie with the horse, which made everyone cry. Yes, and yes, um, yes, and the wolf the as well, which terrified generation. everyone. <laughs> this is obviously based on a German book, um, which I've not never read actually, uh, but it's, the film is kind of based on the first half of the book and. Obviously, Never Ending Story 2, the next chapter, is based on, kind of loosely based on the second half. Yeah, from um, what I know. I don't know an awful lot about the sequels, other yeah. than Derek Meddings was involved with one of them. And one of them was directed by George Miller, which got me excited, but it wasn't that George Miller. So. It was George T. Miller. George T. Miller. Another Australian. <laughs> it's uh, old Patricia Hayes, who obviously uh, a lot of people will remember her from Willow. That's as, right. Uh, as, uh, what's her name? Yeah. <laughs> I've got home. <laughs> the, the, well, she's, she's most well known as the character that showed that first showed us morphine effects. Oh yeah, 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 the old lady. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But so it's, this is in the early period of that sort of fantasy. Uh, was because fan, the fantasy stuff was all kicked in really in the early eighties. Things like yeah. Dragon Slayer, yeah, uh, Conan, um, and. The fantasy genre didn't really take off as as I think the studios expected because they no. pumped in loads of money into different different films like Dark Crystal and yeah. Krull, which, yeah, um, which all, kind of all, kind of fared middling really, especially with Krull. Um, this was being eighty four, so it's it's kind of yeah. in the middle ground of all that. Willow was probably the grand hurrah of that, wasn't it? it was probably yeah, the, the, the big. It's like well, if anyone can do it, George Lucas can, and and. Uh, uh, creatively, absolutely, he he did, or Ron Howard did, but but box office wise, it just didn't. So it was, it was weird. It was like a it was like a genre that was being flogged for a while. They mm. they kept insisting, no no no, we people are going to like this. But there, but this was a success. This was a hit. It was a hit. Yeah, yeah. Most, I think also thanks to the song as well by Lamal, yeah. who because uh, the German release doesn't have the song apparently because it's it's difficult to know. I think, unless you check a, a YouTube video which has. The German intro. I think it made us have the right. Yeah. The um, what what music would that be? I think with, with the horse. Is I it think got the score. Yeah. Is it the um. Yeah. The Klaus thingy Bob. Um. Yeah. Which is a great. It's a great piece of music. The score for this. But we'll we'll go into that when it comes up. So this is Barrett Oliver, who people of a certain age will remember him in pretty much every other movie that came out in the sort of mid eighties time. I particularly remembering in a, in, in a movie called Daryl. Uh, which was uh, about where he was a robot. Uh, was that scored yeah. by Goldsmith, wasn't was it? N- no, no, was that I Horner? So. I can't remember no, I don't think it was oh, okay. any of those guys. But um, uh, yeah, it was a good film where he 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 flies the a blackbird at the end. It's great. <laughs> back at that, back when you were that age, whenever you saw a blackbird plane on on film, you went, "Ah, oh, awesome!" Um, but yeah, so Barry Oliver was in in quite a lot of stuff um, around this time. He was always popping up and things. Because it was strange in the sequel, his father, uh, Bastion's father, is played by John Wesley Ship. Right. The Flash. Right. On the TV, the nineties TV show. Mm. I remember this guy from uh, a TV series that was in in the eighties as well, where he was the brother of. Uh, it was like a like a double act sort of detective duo, and they were brothers. Can't remember what it was called. 
but that's why I always remember him from. And he's in a few other things as well. Is that so? This is I. I have to apologize, guys. We 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 literally just said what should we what should we watch? <laughs> so I'm yeah. So so there's a few things that I'm going to be pulling be, facts out of our I'm gonna be, Yeah, I'm going to be going down memory lane a little bit with this movie because I haven't watched it for a long time. But but it's one of those movies that I watched so much as a kid. It's it's it is engraved in my my grey matter. You know, it's it's kind of never going to come out. So I do remember it very well you know the the music and the shots and how it all works so this is wolfgang peterson directed this after he did das boot and uh he went on to do quite a lot of good movies some enemy, underrated movies enemy mine yeah, enemy mine the following year i think or the year after yeah. for the fox which was was on which was on massive bomb it was a huge flop yeah, yeah. But, but I think it's a I think it's a very interesting film that's a great film yeah and uh, some great effects in that ILM did the did the effects for that because we were discussing earlier beforehand because Brian Johnson had done his visual effects supervisor on this who'd worked on Alien hmm. um, and he did the, the super, supervising this movie but you had mentioned ILM had well, done some uncredited I know, work yeah I know that and, and again I'm pulling all this stuff out of my memory archives last minute but um, but when I was an assistant editor, I was working at. I remember chatting to a guy at Twickenham Studios, um, and he was a he was a post production guy, and he worked in, um, you know, back in those days. Op, I mean, that this was you know, optical was still around back in those days because I'm 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 102 years old. <laughs> but um, he he said that yeah, he, they a lot that he'd worked with ILM on on this movie. Um, he was part of the UK unit doing doing effects, obviously because Brian Johnson was doing it. But um, but a lot of shots were farmed out to ILM. Um, this now this is me talking on hearsay. I haven't looked this up and confirmed it. But I've always assumed that those shots were the ones at the end when the uh, the asteroids when the asteroids are flying around. Because there's, I, I, there's, I a, there's a certain the point. Mats. I'd, yeah, matte paintings. But well, may, maybe maybe. But you but know, because there's quite a lot of mats that would yeah. that would certainly guarantee them a credit. You know? Yeah. I love. I love Bullies of the eighties. Oh yeah, let's put you. In, they always put you in a trash can, that basically full of shredded newspaper. Put you in a dumpster. Yeah, there's never actually like there's never any cat shit. Right? Oh yeah, like <laughs> banana peels and stuff. You know, or a homeless man. It's always just like yeah, bit of paper. straw. He's got straw. straw. Damn, it's been full of paper? straw. So like, damn, we're shrooming the shredded paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You always remember as a kid these these bullies being a lot more threatening. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And, and then when you watch them now, you're like, I want to just come. Uh, nah. Because I think the old man he meets now in the library did return for the sequel, right? Um, I, I I saw bits of the third one, and mm. um, that was directed by Peter McDonald, who who was you know probably one of the best second unit guys in the business. He obviously trained yeah. under Jeffrey Unsworth. Yeah. Um, and he directed Rambo three and Lee, I think Legionnaire right. with That's Van Damme, right. yeah. but yeah, Neverending Story three was just a complete disaster. Yeah. Um, weird tonal shift. But I remember a bit. I remember there being a big deal when number two came out because I, I remember being quite excited to see that, and I saw. It I think like, that was the one Derek Meddings did the effects for, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, I remember because I again back in my early days, um, I got to have a look around um, Magic Camera Company, which was Derek mm. Meddings company at um at shepperton yeah um and they had yeah they showed they showed a lot of the uh uh front projection comps they did for that they, sh- they were showing oh, really? some, some some examples of that yeah so yeah because yeah. you, you 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 had discussed your theory with me earlier about the title never ending story and people complaining that the film ends there is yeah. a, there's an ending to this no, never ending story yeah but no that, but that's not what it means <laughs> and I, and i and i believe and and again like we i haven't watched this for a long time but we'll we'll find out if i'm if i'm remembering right or i'm i'm totally full of shit um <laughs> where we get to it but i i believe that the empress at the end explains exactly what that means and it doesn't it doesn't mean a story that doesn't finish mm. it means this this never ending um uh, audience, this never-ending participation. Um, for so, so she, the Empress, and um, Atreyu are in a story that's being read by Barrett Oliver or Bastion, and and then and then so she says that he's what he's w- watching us now reading this book, 
And then she mentions that he is being watched by others, which you then say, well, that's us, the audience, yeah. are watching him in a movie, reading a book that they're in. And then, and then the assumption is, okay, so then maybe, so are we in a story that's being watched by other people? <laughs> and that, you know, and that, and that's the never-ending story. I believe that's what it is. I think we'll, we'll you know, we're going to find out, folks, when we get there. You know, <laughs> whether, whether I'm remembering that right. But I was also, I was always confused on the 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 library owner's kind of position within this. He's like the sort of gatekeeper of this book. Yeah, because he's always with the mindset that you can't read it. It's not for you. You not you, you mustn't read this book. But it's, it's, there is this kind of, he tempts you. Yeah. And then when they, when they, because he knows the kid takes it and he kind of pulls this kind of little well, grin. Yeah. I always remember that he, he, got, he smiles, doesn't he? When he, when he's run out and yeah. then he kind of frowns when he sees that he's taken it. Mm. So you, so the, so the implication is, I, I, I always, I always took it that it's a, you know, that he tests him, that he's got to make sure he's worthy. Yeah, and maybe he doesn't think he's worthy, and when he does take it, he's maybe in two minds about it, or maybe he thinks maybe he laughs because he thinks that he's scared, scared him off, and then he sees that he's taken it, and then he becomes concerned because this book isn't safe. That's that's how I remember it, but uh, we'll we'll see we'll see what he. But I always remember this little grimace as we pan down or tilt down, yeah. You know, so he looks. So he, he, yeah, he laughs, and then then he looks down, and his face sort of drops a bit. Yeah. yeah. So so I always was like, hmm, is he? But I don't know. But I I always I always yeah, he's like a gatekeeper. But I think he's he's he will just he'll point out to you that you've got to be worthy to read this book, and then yeah. it's up to you whether you feel worth up to it or not. I don't recall where this film was filmed I, it seems like it probably chicago it seems right yeah it seems to look like yeah um but is it a kind of uh sort of breakfast club kind of design with its kind of school and stuff yeah the, oh, the old eight yeah, yeah back back in back in the 80s when you were a kid at school you were like our schools are never like that our schools, <laughs> our schools are like little shacks and <laughs> americans have got these big kind of shopping malls of schools with attics. rows and rows of like um, <laughs> lockers, you know. Yeah, yeah, lockers, <laughs> rows of lockers. That was always something we were jealous of. But I think kids have all that now, don't they? <laughs> going to schools now, and they're like, I, I, they're I, like I had lockers school. at secondary school, but for primary school there mm. wasn't. No, just hang your coat on the jacket peg or something. You have a little drawer, yeah, in the classroom. <laughs> yeah, a little little shoe rack. <laughs> <laughs> Put your trainers in. It certainly didn't have attics like this. No, it's, with, with this is like an attic in a, you know, like a haunted mansion, you yeah. know. But I mean, it just really sets the tone and sets the sort of mm. a great location for this kid to read this kind of story that's going to come to life, essentially. But it's, it's interesting with Wolfgang Pe Peterson because he had the, you know, had this obviously with the success of Das Boo, it kind of got pulled over to the, to the West to do these kind of American features. I mean, this was also mm. a German production, but kind of his yeah. first English-speaking yeah. language. But they, they wanted to get in, get the American market, didn't they? Yeah. And, um, you know, he, I remember, he obviously did, did he do The Perfect Storm? Was that, was he did, yeah, he did yeah, Perfect yeah, Storm. And Air Force One. And, uh, yeah, if, uh, and, but my, my favourite uh, Outbreak. Outbreak, <laughs> I yeah. I adore Outbreak. Outbreak is so good. I, 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 I say anyone, you watch Outbreak, the, the end scene of Outbreak is one of the most tense things ever put on <laughs> screen. When Dustin Hoffman and Cooper Gooding Jr. are up in that helicopter when the plane is coming towards them that's going to bomb the town. <laughs> it is so good. Anyway, that's another movie. But, <laughs> but I, I love Outbreak. I think this, the whole world now, once he reads the book, is incredible. This is design. so good. The yeah. Photography is superb. This is, where, this is where the magic is. This is where suddenly you realise this. there's a... There that's, is a magic in this that's movie. Probably my a favorite effect shot. Yeah, when that's you, yeah. That is that is seamless. Now, to I, me. yeah. Now, is that an optical or is that because it actually? It's it's not it's a front it's, projection thing. It must be a massive projection yeah. screen. But see, look, that all looks seamless, and there's and they're tilting up, so that would make you think that it's a it's a front projection. Mm. Um, but it would be the biggest front projection screen on the face of the planet. Yeah. 
It's but quite, if it's, it's optical, then it's probably one of the best opticals you're ever going to see. Mm. Yeah. The, the photography here really kind of rivals um, Alex Thompson's work on Legend. Yeah. It really is. I think the Legend was the year after this, wasn't it? Legend that was 85. Yeah, Legend was the year after. Yeah. So I, I, it wouldn't I surprise think, me if Ridley yeah. Scott had seen this and gone, I want something similar to that, yeah, you know, absolutely. with the world. I mean, I, do, I love the, yeah, the, the, the way that snail sneezes. <laughs> the, the, yeah, I mean, the, the photography in Legend is, is stunning. I mean, I, I, I love the look of Legend. It's fantastic. Because it, it creates this great uh, some style between the reality and yeah. the fantasy world. You've got a very flat yeah. looking world yeah. to look to with the reality yeah. and also the fantasy. It's completely just crazy with its uh, But now it's like you're in a whole kind of Henson world now. Yeah. And uh, of course, you've got Deep Roy, who's in, who again is in, still in everything. Well, yeah, because he was uh, used heavily in uh, w- Tim Burton's Willy Wonka, wasn't he? Yep. Well, yeah, yeah. There was millions of him. Yeah. He's dubbed with an American, American accent. But he's, uh, yeah. He, but see. he, would, but he was in everything then. I mean, he's in Legend as well, and he's in uh, so many things. And I believe he's he's the main. Um, uh, he's he's one of the main uh, Hobbit doubles, isn't he? In, in uh, Lord of the Rings, with uh, with the with the oh, masks on. Oh, I didn't that know that. Like the actors, yeah. Mm. Also, the rock the rock biter has come to uh, warn them of the nothing. Yeah. And I always kind of uh, as a kid like, what is the nothing? It's yeah. just like I suppose it's just a they, they, they couldn't. Well, I think to it's, explain it. Yeah. It's it's. I think it's a genius concept. When it's everything's gone, there's nothing. Yeah. So, you know. I think it's a genius concept. Especially, especially when it, you know the way it's it's it, it it it's told to you, you know that this this thing called the nothing, and you're like, well, what? Yeah, what is that? But then when it's explained to you what it is, yeah, you know that it's it's the nothing. I think left it's, of, it's, it's of, a of very no imagination. Yeah, you could so remake this movie now with the same story, and have it, and have it uh, a commentary on you know, the the you know the 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 life kids lead today, and the, you know the the uh, you know the world, the the worlds they live in online, as opposed to using their own imagination. You know, you could so do a very, very, very poignant remake of this now. Oh yeah, I would. I I would. I know. I've been thinking about wanting to do something like this. You mm. know, do a remake and oh, have that sort of Lord of the Rings style yeah. production. Oh yeah, you could this, go and really not have it. You know, not be like a ninety minute movie, but it's kind of big epic, but yeah. uses the whole book. Yeah, um, which you could still do in two parts. You know. Um, but yeah, you have this, the comment on like kids aren't reading these books anymore, mm. so that so it's all being never ending stories becoming mm. it's been essentially being destroyed. Um, or you could just basically just like just switch out a lot of the the elements of the reality and just kind of modernize it, but still have this fancy element where it well, follows yeah. a similar beat. Well, exactly. Once film, you go once book. you go into the fantasy world, it's it's going to be the same thing, isn't it? It's going to be like this and. You know, and I'd be up for discussing discussing it being a you know a pseudo sequel or or mm. a, a, a straight up remake. Yeah. Um, but I think this is the kind of thing that this is the kind of thing that you could remake and it would and it wouldn't make this one unvalid because it's like a generational thing. Yeah. You know, because it's such a it's such a kind of a poignant story, really. You know, just about imagination. So it kind of lends itself uh, to a reimagining, as it were. And it, and it, and I'm yeah I'm quite surprised of all the of all the reboots retooling you know all these stupid names we've got for basically remakes um, that are you know being done and in it's the like, works. Do we need another Oliver it's Twist like, remake like, or yeah, no, Christmas Carol where's remake? This, where's this? Where's this? This could really go down well. I think the, the IP of Never Ending Story, the sort of the, the name of it, the branding is still very, very familiar. Yeah, uh, maybe more so with people in their. It's got mid twenties and yeah, older. It's um, got just as much of that nostalgic um, recognition as 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 all the other stuff they're they're redoing. I think that the, the song by Lamal is kind of that sort of you know uh, made it a a popular film in the UK. Yeah, because I think that, I think it did reach number one. I think the single did. There was because um, I was always because when it when I was a kid when you hear when you heard the song you thought it was a woman was singing. Yeah, and it was Lamal from Kajagugu. Yeah, did uh, well, Too Shy song. Yeah. Hush, hush, I do I. Um, which also, the weird thing is, cause when he left Kajagugu, Kajagugu, I think did one more album, but they one of their songs popped up on Santa Claus, the movie. 
It's right. Yes. And that's right. The kids like dribbling over a yeah. McDonald's burger yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. I love I love the bit at the beginning actually. We didn't mention that with with the opening credits where you got this that's basically paint, isn't it? Kind yeah. Of yeah, water. All, you know, you know yeah, that. the cloud tank yeah. effect. The nothing. Now there's always this this there was this fashion back in those days of shooting stuff with that with that strange distorted lens, almost like a anamorphic lens on its side. The, the, it's kind of, yeah, they had this weird thing where it's like it's basically yeah, it's, it's anamorphic. Yeah. But with not being stretched correctly, yeah. Yeah. so you've got this squished anamorphic yeah. look. And, or, uh, or, or, or probably more, more commonly known as um, how Supergirl looks when she's being torn apart. By <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I love the, the joke that they've got this. Look sna- at the lighting on this. Look, so at, look at that. Look at that lighting. That's look amazing scale, isn't it? it looks, yeah. Sorry. When you got, it's great we've got like a snail which is so slow now. It's the fastest thing yeah. in this world, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's great little... Uh, now look at that matte painting. That's wonderful. With that music. Now was it? Did, now the, I think, I think the the uh, ivory tower theme was Giorgio Ramoda. I think. Yes, I believe yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah, because Klaus does the orchestral yeah. stuff, mixed with a bit of synth. I yeah. think there's a bit of synth in that. <laughs> that stupid bat. <laughs> so now we're in models. There is a couple of. Um, I'm sure the guy who who gives a tray a tray of his quest is. I've, I'm sure I've seen him before. Damn it! Not to. The guy. My well, CMO jog my memory. But the, um, the 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 guy with the knobbly bit on his head. The black. Always, the yeah, black gentleman. Yeah. Always remember. Yeah. Always remembered him as a, he's got like a knobbly thing on his head. We'll see. I haven't watched this film for ages. <laughs> but I'm like, yeah. Yeah. So this is this is this is how everyone everyone out there in YouTube land is uh, getting to know how sad I really am because here's a movie that I literally haven't watched. I didn't even know we were going to do this commentary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember so much about it. I haven't watched it for like fifteen years. I think you watched it too many times as a kid. Yeah, it's absolutely. ingrained in your memory now. Absolutely. It just gets engraved in there. It's a, it's a very, you know, simple tale and Yeah, um, it's and a lovely it's, it's a lovely simple little fable. And isn't it? Yeah, it's it's a it's a great that's what I think works so well as a kid's story, kid's fantasy. And, yeah. and as you were saying earlier about the sort of description of the nothing, the nothing is a great term to for a child to understand yeah. what that yeah. what it is, that threat that's coming. Um See he's got a knobbly bit on his head. Oh See? yeah. Oh, those massive phases. heads. <laughs> it's a little bit actually, a little bit like Return to Oz yeah. with its um, yes. production design and costumes yes. and stuff. It's, it wouldn't yes. surprise me if there's a crossover of people. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Um. No, those faces always reminded me of uh, Zayfold Beeblebrox's oh, extra yeah. head in the Hitchhiker's, BBC yeah. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah, I actually watched a movie the other day. Actually, I don't, yeah. mind, I don't mind the movie. I, I don't like mind it. it either. Yeah, I quite. You like know, that. I'm and I'm a I'm a freaky fan of the books and I love them. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I, I, yeah, I think people gave the movie a bit of a bad rap. But yeah, no, but it's so funny though. Like, the, all she needs is a name. Yeah, to say it's someone. To and, say we ne- the and we never hear it, and we never. Hear yeah, the it's this gobbledygook. He shouts yeah. out the window. Yeah, but yeah, but that's great. I think that's I think that's wonderful. <laughs> It's all about this name, and, and we'll never know. We'll never. I suppose if you wonder if, like, if you put like subtitles on, it tells you. You'd be like, oh, that was it. Oh, actually, that's a good idea. We just have those. We just have those question marks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, it just says inaudible. No, oh, I think he. No, I thought he was going to reach out for his. For his lunch, then hmm. and he gets out an apple or a sandwich, doesn't he? So this is where. So he literally now he's he's inventing what a tray is going to look like just by looking at that. Oh yeah, sticker. Imagine if you had like a Mister Blobby on your thing <laughs> or something. You'd be a bit, the film would be a bit screwed, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, if he did go for his lunch, oh, yeah, the tray was like a giant literally apple. The kid had like a Thomas the Tank Engine <laughs> lunchbox. It's the train turns up. What the fuck is this? 
<laughs> okay, now I'm now I'm in my head. I'm replacing a tray with Thomas the Tank Engine <laughs> all through this movie. <laughs> Because I suppose if you had re- if you re- remake it, would you have would essentially would the words be slowly appearing as he's reading it? Like if you turn the page, it's already just appeared to to compensate I, for what I, he's thought of. Yeah, I, I I think a way of doing it would be to maybe do that, maybe do something like that, but do it subtly, like like mm. like that. No one don't draw attention to it, but if if you, if you watch carefully, every time he turns a page. When you see the, when you see the the underside of the page as it's coming yeah, around, it there's nothing on it. Yeah, and then and then when you then as as when he starts reading line. it, you yeah. see it. Yeah, mm. but not but not draw attention, not do it like a cutaway of it appearing. Yeah, just have that as a thing. You know, you want people but, to go, oh, what was yeah, that? You want people you know? to just kind of catch it and go, oh look. We're gonna get this child with no muscle on him to mm-hmm. save the world. Boxy from the original Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, he's not actually a Native American boy, <laughs> as, you, as you probably guessed. <laughs> There's an interview with him on YouTube. He's been interviewed a bunch of times about this movie. Still, yeah. you know, looks like it. Well, it looks like himself there. I'm obviously not a child still, but you yeah. know, he still maintains that kind of look. Yeah. Because if you saw him, you go, "Oh, that's a Treyu." Yeah, yeah all right. Yeah, 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 you wouldn't be like, yeah. "Who's that dude?" It's a Treyu as an adult. So it's the classic quest setting up the quest. Yeah, even though we don't really know what <laughs> what the quest is, because <laughs> he needs to find. Yeah, because he's kind of out to discover what's causing the nothing, right? Mm. What's, what's causing this, this kind of yeah. the destruction of their world, and I think basically along the way he discovers that he just needs to name her, doesn't he? Yeah, really? and gets to the point where everything starts from a, from the beginning again. Yeah, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I mean, the name, the name, can see is, you know, again in my mind is a is a, it, it's it's metaphorical, isn't it? it it's it's you know will he have the guts to 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 believe that this is a real thing you know that this is actually happening will he have mm. the guts to accept that he's reading a story that um you know that is real i love like the kids reading the book he goes he goes he gives him a necklace with a symbol that's on the book yeah. what yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, on the book. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. It's on the book. Now, now it's coming up one of the best musical cues in the whole film. Right, yes. Because they read, obviously, use it when yeah. the kid flies. With but if you notice, Falcon. he look, he looks at the front of the book, and then we see what it looks like. Mm. So again, so uh. he, so he obviously says a symbol, and he's he remembers it, looks at it, and then we see what it looks like. Here we go. This music, it's wonderful. It's yeah, exactly. If I directed the remake. Uh, this this music would has, be, has in to it, be in it 100%. Yeah. There's a wonderful Matt painting when he um I love this bit because the horse passes all the other horses. Yeah. Yeah. Gives him a gives yeah. him a yell. <laughs> it's just, he comes yeah. through he runs through like he's past this river. It's incre- this yeah. bit here. There we go. It goes yeah, it goes oh. into the background and it cuts to the incoming forward, I think. I miss I I so miss old old fashioned painted mats. I oh, really do. Man, yeah. Cause now because now obviously now he's gone on this mission, nothing has called upon the wolf yep. to yep. to get him. Cause this this was terrified my sister <laughs> as a kid. She was a, she just hated wolves and your sister, Oliver. Yeah, yeah, was it, yeah it was it yeah. Yeah. Well was yeah, we'll me? say we'll was say yeah, we'll say it was your sister. Shut up, shut up. I was scared of Metal Vera from Superman <laughs> three. And, and Skeksis. Oh, who wasn't? Jesus. And, and fucking Skeksis. Terrified me. <laughs> Skeksis. Yeah. But yeah, the wolf, yeah. Mm. I mean, for, for, for a kid's film, you know. Yeah. This, this is oh, a, God, yeah. Rated to you. Well, this is, again, this is what... Terrified you know, this, is what, this is what everyone gets confused about with modern day movies and, and these movies. You know, kids' films in these in the 80s were, you know, they... Yeah, they didn't hold back, and they but they weren't, you know... They weren't they only became PG thirteen when 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 you rip someone's heart out or or blew up a creature in a microwave or, or you do a big swear yeah <laughs> but 
you know, but you know, anything else, you know, so I just PG or some U's. I mean, for crying out loud, I think this was a U. It was a U. Yeah. 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 I mean, Jesus Christ! Come on! <laughs> oh, what a different, a what a different a time! Yeah, got a horse wolf. dying, not just dying, but dying of sadness, <laughs> and 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 a, a wolf that makes you want to pee your pants. <laughs> and it's a you universal has suitable for, for all. Has he gone for a peanut butter sandwich? Yeah, gone for I don't his, know. Yeah. Who knows? This is just like something out of mm. Dark Crystal here yeah. with the. Uh, with the Gelfling. Yeah. Is Gelfling? Yeah. Gelfling. Yeah. Gelfling's here. Yeah. Uh, Gelfling? Uh, with a, yeah. No. Woman with I, a love, I love the Dark Crystal. Hand. Dark Crystal is a true work of art, I think. It's, oh, it's a masterpiece. Yeah. It's absolutely freaking amazing. Look at that. Where are we going? Yeah. It's all just, just taking just, me, just taking going me somewhere. The wrong direction. I love it. It's great, but the music's great. So let's just keep going. Yeah. This is my favourite shot. Yeah. There we go. That's it. Look weird at crystals that. coming out. Yeah. It's almost Superman. <laughs> yeah. Superman's there. Get off my land. See that? Okay. That 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 is an that shot is a brilliant example of brilliant production design. Yeah. In that they they. They they designed these crystal things and they're like right we're going to have some live action ones that we're going to stick I think I think that's a, that's a location we're going to stick them on location stick one in the in the river mm. there's probably two of them that are real set pieces that they brought in yeah and then knowing that then and that just marries up the foreground real element with the matte painting mm. and it and it it's 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 thought about you know it's mm. thought about in a pure visual sense. How do we sell this this shot? How do we sell this effect where we're going to marry live action with a matte painting? And uh, you know, and that that it's that kind of thought process that I, you know, to you know, for for not not having any other words for it, get off on. Quite frankly, <laughs> when it comes when it comes to movie making, this, I I love that that simple little stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, is this far more easy now just to sort of avoid any risk? Or yeah. Just going shit in green screen. Yeah. You know, well, just, mo movies yeah. are all are made in post production now. Yeah. I mean, they are literally, you, you're collecting live action elements and then it's all assembled and knitted together. And, uh, and, and there's no in camera effects that you have to, once it's, once it's cut and print, that's what you've got. Mm. No, you can, you can keep finessing it till the very end, which has, has given us some amazing stuff. But it's changed the landscape of filmmaking. It's changed the way you you make movies now of, of of a large scale, and that's something that you know that keeps coming up in our discussions. And yeah. we're going to probably talk properly about that sometime but also, soon. You know, but also, this cripples the movies, increases movies production. We've got too many cooks wanting to make so many changes all the time at the last minute. Oh, I don't like well, this. Don't like that. Absolutely, and it, and it becomes yeah. this, what the original idea just becomes completely yeah, that's diluted. Why, yeah, that's and why... And, and I'm glad that we're talking about something else now whilst the horse dies oh, of sadness because yeah. I just don't want to watch this. Um, <laughs> but it's... Uh, you know, it, it's endemic in the way movies are now. You know, the, the big budget movies, they don't feel... You know, you know people... You know, why is there a nostalgia? Why is there a love for these movies of, of, of this era? Because they were... Because they're big high concept movies and they're, and they're, they're, they're doing you know, fantasy stuff or they're, they're pushing uh, the techniques and all that. But it's, you feel the vision of a filmmaker mm. doing it. You don't feel a, a committee has shot the shit out of this and kept cutting it together till the, till the very end. You feel, you feel a plan in the filmmaking that's been, uh, that's come up in, in a filmmaker's head and been executed. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes it goes wrong and sometimes they have to fix things and all that, but you can feel that, you can feel that, you know, they're directed. Um, whereas big budget movies these days, to a very large degree, don't feel very directed. They feel edited, you know. Yeah. They feel like an assembly of stuff put together. And that's not me necessarily criticising, because there's a lot of films around that I love, but... But it's this kind of filmmaking. Oh God, I hate this. He waits, fades to black, and then it comes yeah. up, and he's just like fades oh. to black, and he's screaming, and he's screaming, and then it's like, oh yes, he's dead. And we just go, that's oh, a hor God, oh, that's a horrible. God, traumatized me as a kid. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and but it it's just you know, 
you just you know it, it, i think that that's why the magic of these movies it kind of endures and why people still still love them because because they just feel different because they feel more like yeah that was me barry i was <laughs> crying with you <laughs> I think I turned it off, <laughs> like the VHS. I think I, I literally was like, I don't know if I want to watch this. See, all, all, all rental tapes and everything yeah. story. The first half, yeah. this movie's all got yeah. major tracking issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and yeah. And then, it's completely and then it's all fine. It's like it's been watched three times. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah. So, uh, so anyway, yeah. But that that's just me, sort of just off the cuff, trying to come up with some kind of reason for why why we still love these movies and why there's a fact and why the you know new generations still love these movies and why they they discover these films and and love them and you know my my niece and nephew who are you know you know they're, they're a lot older now but when they were kids when they were very young you know they watched the likes of et gremlins goonies and fell in love with these movies yeah they didn't you know because they they recognize the time, at the moment when you you know these kids you know who are Aware of what's going on at the cinema, you know what film, new films are out, and when they, and there isn't in terms of variety of choice. I think they're, they're, it's relatively quite limited when you look at when you show them older stuff like Goonies and Neverending Story. Mm. It seems to be quite something different to them, and so yeah. there's a sort of sense of magic's there and fantasy yeah. where it doesn't take itself far too seriously. There's a sense of just like let's have fun with this. Well, there was so there is a, a, a it's, it's also a great uh, window to escape. Mm. Like what was what's going Absolutely. on in reality? But they took risks with the tones as, as well. I, I'm, I remember um, when we I don't, you, you were at the BFI screening of Hallow's Eve, when, mm. yeah, and which Mark Price uh, did the Q and A with me afterwards, and and someone in the audience had brought up a question about the tone of the film, yeah, and what was supposed to be funny, what was supposed to be scary, and all that stuff, and 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 seemed to have a real issue with it. And this is something that you know that is. Very much on people's minds these days is the tone of the film, who are you making this film for, whatever. Whereas back in these days, they were much freer to go from one extreme to the other with the tone. Mm. Like you say, there, there's there's an ele- there's an element of fun to these films. There's an element of not taking it too seriously, but then there's also stuff that scares the shit out of you, makes you cry, and yeah. and really really pushes you know the the serious stuff, and and they. And they managed to make these things work hand in hand. Whereas these days, you get a lot of people, and it, and it, it's kind of an internet phenomenon as well, where people just seem to like not let a story be told to them. They've always got a a, a criticism of how it's been done, mm-hmm. and they'll always be like, "Well, I could, you know, I didn't, you know, this happened, and then suddenly this happened, and why is this? Why is why is this? We shifting from one tone to the other? Whereas back in those days, you just you just you just accepted it. You're like, well, this is what the director wants to do. The director wants to make me laugh and have fun here, and then suddenly wants to show me something scary. I think that balancing the, the tone is 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 one of the difficult traits, isn't it? As as a director, is sort of oh, absolutely, uh, yeah, it's and, not easy. And, and there's you get these weird shifts in movies, which yeah. which is you know which is valid to criticize. Yeah, but I think, but with, I but I do honestly think that you've, yeah. if you made movies that had the tonal shifts that mm. these movies do, people mm. you would get criticized for it a mm. lot more. Than you did back in these days. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, if if this was released now, I think there'd be if it got a universal rating mm. for for children. I think there would be a lot of upset parents about the horse and the, and yeah. the wolf. And yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's yeah, it's, it's it's funny even at the time where when I when I worked as a projectionist, you had kids going into the dark night. It was twelve a. You can go in supervised by a parent, but parents were coming out and complaining, saying it's too scary for kids. And I was like, well, don't fucking take them to twelve a then. It should just yeah. be, it should just be called a twelve. Exactly. Fuck the yeah. kids have to wait. Yeah. They can't go in because they yeah. end up ruining it for everyone else. Yeah, yeah. by f- fidgeting. Yeah, <laughs> and running around and going yeah. constant yeah. peas. Yeah. yeah. So this is this is an amazing puppet. Look at it. Look at the, look at the photography is, on yeah. that. It's just stunning. Boy, well, yeah, it's all, all the the high speed photography. The, you know, back in the days when you shot miniatures, you used to have to shoot them at high speed, so that so that they were you know effectively in slow motion, and it it just gave gave models weight heft. It's yeah. funny. You would do it even if there was no motion to it. You would still shoot it in high speed because it just. Well, that'd be that's a puppet, isn't it? But yeah. You know, also, the the long shot would be miniature. yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, because yeah, he's oh yeah, I forgot you yeah, because he's allergic to humans, isn't he? Yeah. 
So this is a giant tortoise. So that 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 must be front projection. I think it's blue screen there. Yeah, I think it's blue screen well, because there is there screen. is a kind of um, you can see around the tree itself. Yeah, there's a little bit of like there's, wobbling, there's an uh, artifact um, going on. Yeah, yeah Some, sometimes you you do get that with faded. front projection as well, but there is. But I I'm, you know, but I don't know. I, the, I the blue screen know. stuff isn't in this in this. Sorry, the blue screen stuff in this movie is particularly brilliant. Where you've got um, the flying sequence at the end. It's very flat. Yeah. I think it's how it's been, how it's been yeah. covered. Um, yeah. That's why I assumed this stuff was might, might not be because it's yeah. so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, who knows? Might have been one of those alleged mysterious ILM shots. Who knows? So the, this this concept of the, this, this giant tortoise that constantly refers to itself as we yeah because it's so it's because it, it never has anyone else around so he talks to himself <laughs> and so we're we because we we have a we're, we have a chat you know it's it's again it's such a simple little there isn't like a, a subtle little childlike ref- sort of uh concept because he heard we heard the scream of bastion didn't we but i think the tortoise that's right yeah is aware of the reader yeah. So yeah, so yeah, because Bastion screen and they they heard it and and he read and he read that they heard it. Oh, he's been reading for like eight hours. Eight hours. He's a bit of a slow reader, isn't he? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> it's a deep book. Let's be like to Stephen King. Oh, this page is boring. <laughs> the page. <laughs> he's reading it. So he's <laughs> he's, he's, he's yeah. going to be there for ten years. <laughs> Always one of those weird things about you know staying in school overnight alone. I'll be worried about it being haunted or something. Yeah, so the imagination will get the best of you. Yeah, well, if you stay in if you stay in a cobweb soaked attic, yeah, (laughs) with 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 animal heads and (laughs) skeletons, then yeah, you would. Where's he going now? I can't remember now. I think he goes he, he goes to run out, doesn't he? But then he comes back. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, he's got to stay the course. It started raining on cue when everyone left, mm. which is quite convenient. Yeah, he wouldn't quit either. Yeah. The wolf head, yeah. yeah it's the, the wolf's glowing eyes were always a, a thing. Yeah, that was, yeah. This was, this was a bit of a close shaper, I'll try you. Yeah, walks so the, right behind him. Yeah, and then the big flying and tampon because <laughs> 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 saves him. <laughs> <laughs> the big flying tampon. <laughs> the it comes in. Yeah, the the the, the, the st- I think it's a stop motion puppet, isn't it? The the the, uh, the miniature. No, oh, yeah, when you see it comes down, it's like, eh, it's eh, like eh, yeah, it's a bit, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a bit, bit dodge. Um, it's a bit dodge. And when you see the uh, the puppet of. Uh, Falcor kind of like within camera, there's not much movement in his face. It's not it's the most ginormous... articulate. It's a, such a huge puppet. It's, yeah, yeah. I, I believe the the largest of its of its kind, wasn't it? At, at the at largest and animatronic. So I, remember, I remember reading about like this is a different film, but it's like um, Dragonheart, where Richard Donner was going to do it, and he wants oh, to do really? like this ginormous puppet of a dragon. But, oh man! Yeah, they CGI'd it. Oh, what kind of and, a movie would we have had? Yeah, it'd been so good. <laughs> That film's such a movie that's just not as good as it should be. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it doesn't move. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, bless him. <laughs> Saved by the tampon. <laughs> I don't know what a tampon is, but that's what it says here. <laughs> Because you yeah, wouldn't if um, I suppose Falcor's already like designed in the book like to look like that, but he hasn't thought of it. 
Imagine if the kid had no imagination. I mean, it was the worst looking thing ever, wouldn't it? It's just like everything's just stick figures. <laughs> stick <laughs> figures, yeah. <laughs> So his Falcor's obviously designed to look like a a dog. Yeah, a dog mixed with a dragon, yeah. isn't it? That's good that they may have got him breathing. Like mm. the attention to detail there. A luck dragon. Oh yeah, a luck dragon. I mean it's a hell of a thing. Look at it. It's a real it's, it's a real puppet there. Real yeah. Giant animatronic. Have you seen the uh, this episode of Family Guy where Peter Griffin's on Falcon and he's like, yeah, yeah. and he's like, and he's flying and he goes, oh, yeah. you're a little bit heavy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're coming right. down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Into the floor. <laughs> that dragon must do massive shit. God. <laughs> <laughs> that's, when, that's one big pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's one big pile of shit. <laughs> you can't do one. You wouldn't get... You wouldn't have a line like that in a movie now. Um, <laughs> I like so, children. Well, yeah, so the articulation <laughs> of this puppet is yeah is very limited, and it's no, but you probably get more out of a sock puppet. But yeah. what you yeah, what, which is obviously what they. I mean, the best example of a giant puppet articulating is Audrey Two in Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, that's, it, that's incredible! It, it's yeah. absolutely amazing. But that was all shot at um, half speed. Yeah. And um, so whenever Rick Moranis is in the same shot as the puppet, he's acting slowly. Yeah. And he's saying his lines slowly. Or when he's singing, he's miming slowly. So it's played back at, at twice speed. That's that's how they got that articulation in, in that puppet. Because mm. it's so complex, you couldn't do it at full speed. I'm, 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 I'm sure this movie was doing, you know, was tackling a lot of visual effects which haven't been done before. And oh, it's very, it's, yeah. it's all, you know... Trial and error, really. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So. Well, exactly. This is this this is this really is what precedes Audrey too. You know, they they Conway and his crew would have looked at this and and Frank Oz and they would have said, right, we 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 need something bigger than this, but it's got to be better. So they'd figure out different ways, and he's got to sing. <laughs> but I don't. I don't think Brian Henson was involved in this. I don't believe. Maybe <clears throat> I can't remember now. Yeah, I don't I think so. Yeah. Because I think, yeah, because I think this was the largest animatronic until Audrey 2. And then I think Audrey 2 held the, held the, held it until the Alien Queen. That's in which, terms of on film. Yeah. Not like a amusement ride. We oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. No, King Kong, film. whatever. Yeah. Or... yeah. And then the Alien Queen, I think, held it till the T-Rex in Jurassic Park, I believe. This should have been like a, a Billy Crystal cameo or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Princess Bride. No? Yeah. Hop a dig. Hop a dig, hop a dig. <laughs> I got Fra- you. Fra- has a creepy smile. <laughs> I like children. <laughs> oh, just eats him. The end. So I think there's there's some great false perspective stuff coming up as well here. Look at that. How, look how yeah. like, the, the lighting is look so good. Look, it looks Who great. Who photographed this bloody thing? I can't remember his name. I'm assuming it's the same DP that did Das Boot. Yeah, it's not on the box. <laughs> People at home listening, this is the, this is the Blu-ray. <laughs> and special features for the first time in 5.1 audio. <laughs> Doesn't even come with a trailer. Uh Back in the days where special features was a menu. It's yeah, an it is, interactive it still menu. Is, apparently, with Born Above us and this Blu ray release. Yeah, because even on Laserdisc, there's no special features or anything like that. It's a movie that's kind of <clears> just seems to be, it's kind of, I don't know, left by the wayside by the studio. Um, I'm surprised Wolfgang Peterson hasn't done like a audio commentary. Maybe yeah. there may be some sort of German release coming out soon. Because in Germany, Blu ray's physical media it does very well. 
So if you want, like, there's quite a lot of special editions of movies coming out over there which don't come out anywhere else. Right. With new collector's editions. There's a couple of ropey ones I've got, but, I mean, there's some good stuff out there. Okay, the the, the cinematographer for this movie was, uh, now my pronunciation might, might really uh, come back to haunt me. Uh, I, I, I think it's pronounced Jost. Jost, Vakanoff. Yeah. Uh, it's spelt J O S T. Oh, I know. You're such a stupid Robocop. And he did Starship Troopers and Robocop. Yeah, shit. Yeah. And Total Recall. So, the yes. guy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, so he was around for, he was around since, since, since the late this 50s. Quite possibly then could be his best looking work, I think, out of those movies that you've listed. Oh, it's tough. You know. That's tough. I mean, well, this, know, I mean, I, to, it, Total Recall's pretty damn it's good pretty, looking. pretty good. But, I mean, I mean, this, I mean, the challenge of. I think yeah, this. I think you're probably right for if you if you really break it down because you know if you'd compare a shot from Total Recall, say, I don't know, and something like this where you saw the rock biter, yeah, you'd be like, mm, I don't know, yeah, I'd probably say, well, that, that's story. a that's a VFX thing, though, mm. isn't it? I mean, some some of the optical work in Total, Total Recall is quite a groundbreaking movie, effects wise. Some of the, some of the well, it's the last of the analog phase of yeah. effects, wasn't it? One of the a lot of the people involved said it was one of the last big ones to sort of use old school methods yeah you know, for thing I think went digital compositing but the but yeah but if you like you say you break down you you look at the the lighting in in this sequence here and you know you're right it's 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 definitely up there there's nothing I think it's far more of a challenge I think there's nothing this. in yeah. I mean Total Recall is just is just overall one of the most unique looking movies ever but that's that's probably got a lot more to do with Verhoeven and and and, mm. uh, and Rob Bottin. Mm. Uh, it, it and it's you know it's brilliantly lit. There's no doubt about it. But th- whereas this, yeah, there's definitely a a look to this. That's so. This is all false perspective. Look at that. That's amazing. It kind of looks a bit like those kind of intro vision kind of. Mm. Oh shots. no no that's that's Isn't that's it? a model. That's oh of course of course of course yeah, yeah, yeah it's like a that's what intro vision kind of yeah did similar effects with you know with yeah the... no absolutely yeah. Oh yeah, the Introvision stuff is in. in uh, that's in that, that's in that video. Is that the promotional yes, video? Yes, Introvision. That it's, was insanely good. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, oh god, why didn't? Because they because they hid a lot of their tricks and of the trade yeah. for ages. And People didn't know what they were saying. Is how we do it? Yeah. You know. This oh yeah, this is where I think there's some real false perspective stuff. Yeah, look. So that's so oh, he's yeah, he's yeah. like far away. That's right. Yeah. No. Yeah. See. Before nice. Peter Jackson did it in Lord of the Rings, Wolfgang Peterson was doing it. Yep. In the He's got to get story. past those two two statues with, with the big tits. Yeah, the big booby statues. <laughs> where this this random knight just turns yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's like, bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. Because it feels like a very actually empty world. It's very so, empty, yeah. Yeah, and you just see this kind of random knight seems to have walked out of Excalibur. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> Slam Nelson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> completely <laughs> fried. <laughs> Guest directed by John Borman. <laughs> it's a very good looking movie, Excalibur. Oh, it's stunning. Beauty, the whole, beautiful. I think the shot. whole film shot with yeah. like tights on the lens. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's very, it's, it's <laughs> got John ultra, Borman's, ultra Onsworth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Got, John Borman got his yeah. wife's tights and spent <laughs> yeah. over the lens. <laughs> right, go. <gal. laughs> yeah. That's that's a look I miss. Yeah, I do as well. Yeah, that, wait, that, that the DP look. on um, Conan the Destroyer used it quite heavily in yeah. that film, and he used bits weirdly because he photographed First Blood Part Two, one of the best. I think it's, I think it's Jack Cardiff actually. Right. Yes. Yeah, one of the yes. one of the best right, DPs yeah. ever, yeah. and then yeah. Rambo Two has the most inconsistent photography ever. Yeah. Like, yeah. Some of it's through you know this fudgy you know tights kind mm. of lens thing, and then you've yeah. got like weird day for night shots. It's almost sci-fi this bit, isn't it? Yeah. So he walk, when he walks past it, doesn't it? The uh, the helmet just randomly opens to show his charred skeletal face. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Where it, it implies that he can walk through it because he's got he's he's got a good heart, you know. He's, yeah. he's a good guy, basically. You know, he's he's uh, 
has the will to go on. But he's um, they still fire at him. Yeah, he just he just jumps it. out of the way. Jumps out of the way. Well, we, you could just can you just like well, walk I'm... around him. <laughs> you know. I, 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 again, you, it's like I never thought again, of that. It's like, it's like, well, you're not, you know, you've still got to be where it's not like you just stroll through. It's just that they'll, they'll, um, they'll give you a fighting chance if you're. You a can good easily person. sneak around the background near their bum. Just, <laughs> just crawl through that bit there. You're fine. I don't know. I reckon that you, you'll get shot if you do that. So that's a miniature. That, so that that's blue screen. And he's on like a yeah. uh, bloody. Yeah. treadmill yeah so this is he's obviously all blue screen here you can you can feel you can see that in the hair but it's still pretty good quality from for for, for the time yeah yeah there's not nothing much of it is faded doesn't, yeah that's like doesn't over the compositing the loss of color Yeah, you, I think as he walks past the remains of the night, I think you said uh, you see his charred remains. This was a you, people. <laughs> Big boobs coming <laughs> at you. <laughs> and charred bodies. I'd take the sword with me, just in case you can stab the wolf later. <laughs> yeah. Which kind of does, doesn't he? Doesn't it, the wolf get impaled? It jumps at him, doesn't it? Yeah. And he gets stabbed. On a, yeah. God, what does he stab him with? Is it? I can't remember. Is it a piece of glass or something? No, it's... it might be actually, yeah. Or like a, like a, like a dagger, basically a rock. Yeah, kind yeah of, it's he's, rock he's picked or like up, a stalactite or shard yeah. of rock or something. Well, we'll find out. Yeah, so lots of people have died here. Lots of people with not good hearts. <laughs> have a cardiac arrest. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah, for the kids, <laughs> the kids, right? <laughs> there was a video game of Never Ending Story. Was there for the old? Uh, I think it was Commodore sixty four, I believe. Uh, maybe possibly the Spectrum. It's like a um, like a text based adventure. Yeah. So you just kind of like right. go left. And yeah. It tells you the story. The kind of games that I used to actually write in basic <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> Choose your own adventure games. <laughs> <laughs> I never liked those as a book form because I, I turn the page it goes you're dead no fuck yeah, that I'll I'm go like, back no, no. I'll go I'll, right, go I'll do something else I'll do instead. something else then yeah <laughs> Rana Treyu imagine if I just get firing and firing at him mm. you know <laughs> he made it through the sphincter <laughs> it's a sudden change of <laughs> he made it he made it I knew he'd be alright no he won't he's gonna die on the next one I think this kind of luck dragon's a bit stoned, actually. <laughs> well, it's just she's just injected him with something. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. who's this a tray <laughs> you're like, talking about? That, that stupid little kid out there. Fine. I thought well, I ate him. <laughs> what do we do with luck? <laughs> the universe will just make things happen. Oh, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, because he sees himself. He sees the kid. He sees Bastion, he sees, doesn't he? Yeah, in, he sees the, Bastion. in the mirror. Oh, that whistling sound of the wind, a bit like my nose sometimes. Actually. <laughs> I've often play, playing video games online with the headset. My, my friend's like, breathe with your goddamn mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Homer Simpson with those going. 
That throws a wobbly. Wasn't it? And Peter McNichol in uh, Ali McBeal, he always had a, a whistle in his nose. <laughs> like in court, he'd just like... <laughs> Peter McNichol. Obviously... And Ghostbusters 2. Ghostbusters 2. Yeah. And Dragon Slayer. <laughs> he's the hero in Dragon Slayer. He's played the, yeah. played, the, played the best thing in Ghostbusters 2, actually. Oh, but yeah. yeah. He is, totally. <laughs> Evil? Mm. No, he is, yeah. Every, everything you're doing is wrong. I just want you to know this. <laughs> that, yeah. so, he's so good. I, dripping, I love him. Dripping, dripping with amazing. goo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dripping with goos. <laughs> Sorry, just had to click my wrist. Sorry, out there in YouTube land. <laughs> I'm an old man. <laughs> I don't know what that passage would say in the book. <laughs> he's <laughs> a child reading a book. He has a book. bowl cut. Yes. And he's called His Bastion. mum obviously cut his hair before she died. <laughs> I can't remember. What, what, did, they, did they reveal how his mum died? Was it, I presume just... You know, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think they do. No. See, it's interesting how, you know, again, you, how you, how would you tell this, how you tell this story, you know, how you choose to do it and just chooses to do it by actually literally having them looking at each other you another way you could do it is is you would you would show him you know show words flashing up that he's reading that are describing him describing what he's wearing describing what's in the room behind him mm. you know you could you know you could literally go ha how the the book describes the room he's in yeah and that would freak him out you know oh yeah yeah you know, it's, like, it's, 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 it's not a not a great way to look at it with yeah. the with the direction, but do you think the approach Wolfgang's done is actually far more simple? Oh, oh, absolutely. And it, and it, oh, yeah, no, no, it's, 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 ele it's elegant. Does, does it's, the same thing. It's film. It? Yeah. It's film language. It's elegant. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. I'm I'm just overthinking it. I'm no, like, sure. you know, how you would do it differently. Um, it's not necessarily how you would do it better. It's just a, sure. a different way. Uh, Wolfgang Peterson, did, yeah, it was just like, well, we just literally have them looking at each other. Mm. It's the thing with, with with films, and and again with with the with with this era of filmmaking, usually, you know, the elegant solution is the simple one. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. You don't need to convolute it too much, and no. trust the audience to fill in the gaps. You know, oh, more statues. You can easily walk around these ones yeah. as well. So they these then they start to come apart. These statues. Yeah, they, they begin they, to crumble, and yeah. he has to run. If the nothing is basically caught up, I think. Yeah. Is. Mickey Mouse. <laughs> That's Fantasia, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Night on Bald Mountain is my. Is it? Was it? I. I think I put up a post at one time when they when they were doing all these live action remakes of the Disney cartoons. I said I take dibs on Night on Bald Mountain from Fantasia. <laughs> <laughs> when you literally have the top of a mountain become a demon, and all these. Ghosts and skeletons start dancing around. I'm like, yep, yeah, I want to do that one. <laughs> they should have that if they did that. They have. They should have every segment done by different directors. A bit like mm. Twilight Zone. Yeah. That's really cool. Mm. It's, it's, it's not showing you the whole thing breaking up in segments. Yeah. See, now he runs back the other way. He needs to go get Falcor. He's got he's got a mm. massive run to do now to, get, <laughs> to go back to Falcor. And he gets shot by the by the other ones. No, Falcor just turned up anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. so they're not clouds. That's like cotton wool. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh, some more f- oh, wonderful music now. Yeah. Again, which is always good. No, it's not. No, it's it's not. fine. It's does <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Everything's normal. So here we have blue screen studio with smoke being blown in the studio. It's surprising they didn't actually bother to do front projection or hire the Zoptic system for this. That would have been interesting, isn't it? I, I, I guess it'd be impossible to use optics with, yeah. with this animatronic. I don't know. Here we go. <laughs> it's, 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 see, this bit's it's, it's generally okay with the blue screen stuff here, yeah. right? But when it yeah. goes to the animated... Yeah, it's so little, 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 Yeah, It's great. Yeah, that's where they needed uh, ILM's go motion technique that, yeah. they, that they developed for Dragon Slayer, which is still the best dragon ever put on screen. I remember when I saw, because I mentioned Dragonheart earlier, I quite liked Dragonheart as a kid. I was thinking, oh, especially when I was baby. When did when that come out? 95, 96, Dragonheart? Yeah, mid 90s. So I was just, I was a teenager. But I remember I cried at the end. <laughs> I think when yeah, Cause Sean Connery. And he yeah, but they they they. I always remember with that that they they completely ruined the moment with, bless him, he's one of the fantastic guy, fantastic actor. But Pete Postlethwaite suddenly does a, comes in as a voiceover at the end, and it really ruins the moment. <laughs> oh no! You're like you didn't need that. <laughs> but he, Dennis he, Quaid I mean, looking up at the stars, tearful. Oh, that's right. And yeah. the music, the score for Dragonheart is. Brilliant. That's Randy Aldman, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's fantastic. But um Paul Cohen's guy. But it, it's it it's just it suffers from that lack of verisimilitude of the world, I think. It, mm. You know, you Yeah, there is a you're bit of watching like this actors, kind of it's almost like reenactors doing doing their thing. Yeah, LARPing. Yeah, you know. It just doesn't have that grittiness to it that makes it feel real. Doesn't feel like England, does it? No. See if you had yeah, if Donna had done it. You know, Dragonheart would have been great, like, if it was directed by Terry Gilliam or someone oh, like that. Oh, that would have been bonkers. You know. So they're spinning around in the... I'm, I'm wondering if ILM did the cloud effects, actually, because they, they always had the the big... the big cloud tank. The the cloud tank that I think that um it did on Star Trek that, too. That, isn't it? Uh yeah. I think I think it was the same cloud tank that Doug Trumbull created for uh, close encounters. Mm. And then I think ILM took it and started doing and they did all their cloud effects they in it. They stole it. Yeah. <laughs> with um for for raiders and uh and poltergeist and all that. Because I think they shot the 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 beast from Poltergeist in it. You know, the beast that appears outside the kid's door. Oh, yeah. Which is so oh, where, the one, where the mother tries to get into yeah. the room. That was really good. I love Poltergeist. Stay away from my babies. Poltergeist is so good. It's a good film, yeah. I love it. Still still got one of the most jarring edits in it, though. Oh, well, that weird... They were Pizza be, being bit. pulled along. It cuts to yeah. them knocking at a bloke's door to get hit, like, yeah. attacked by mozzies. I thought, like, what the fuck? <laughs> most abrupt edit. That was a good mat as well. Yeah, yeah, it was. I forgot how many good freaking mat paintings there were in this. Yeah. That's great use of locations as well. There's so much variety in it. Mm. Look at the clouds behind yeah. as well. Everything's going upwards. You know? Yeah, you see so that's coming, it. So that, it's so like there's a sucked off the, uh, <laughs> yeah. sucked off the ground <laughs> into the air, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Grow up, people. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm laughing with you. Um, <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, yeah, look, look the oh, footsteps God. of the wolf. The wolf's been here. He betrayed you. <laughs> oh, no. If you had a big white dog, you'd have to call it Falco, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the rock, the rock, the rock biter, yeah. <laughs> He's a result of cannibalism. He's not eating himself. Well, this oh, is what he, do. he just, he just, doesn't he just, he talks about how watching his friends die. Yeah. Doesn't he? Yeah. About how he had hold of them and 
and couldn't hold on to him. Yeah. He's like, oh, oh my rock. God. <laughs> it's really, really dark. Oh, that's, yeah, a bit of wobbly blue screen. Yeah. The, um, yeah, because in the sequel, he's got a kid. Right, yeah, that's rock, right. Yeah, yeah, rock man, that's, yeah. Doesn't it start doing rapping or something? Oh, or God, that's the third that one, the third I one? think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, there's some really, oh, yeah, just weird how to shit. Completely ruined. It's things, got the right? kid from Free Willy in it. That's right, right. As, the, as, the, as Bastion, and he gets yeah. As you, we were discussing before the commentary, it's got Jack yeah. Black in it as one of the bullies. That's right, yeah. One of his early roles. The stupid bet. <laughs> it's so dark. Maybe he crushed him in his hands, and he's just lying to him. <laughs> And he's crying. Yeah. He's crying gravel. <laughs> to to be fair, you didn't have much info to go on, mate. You know, I wouldn't don't beat yourself too much up. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you all you, your task was go and stop the nothing. Uh, yeah. Where, where do we go? How? Go that way. Like, just go over there somewhere <laughs> and figure it out. Just ride your horse and you'll figure it out. Oh my god! It's so dark. <laughs> he's watched his friends die, and now he's just gonna sit and he's just gonna let it, let, let it take him. Yeah, commit suicide. It's like, and he's crying. No, stop it! <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. That's, yeah, that is cool. Here we go. Nice big sets falling apart. I love it. Yeah. They like stuff on Krypton or something, you know. Yeah. Colin Chilvers. Type think, of stuff. Yeah. I think the the biggest version of that was uh Last Crusade. The set on Last Crusade. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. To come apart. Yeah. yeah. This, uh, this I always talk to people about was uh, always really blows me away with its with its direction here because you see all the murals on the wall of yeah. of uh, a trade's journey. Yeah. And then it gets the final one. And it's the wolf. And the wolf and is it's there. right yeah. behind him. Yeah. And I was like, oh, uh, my it God. It used to freak you out as a kid. Really God. Good. Yeah. Oh, it's that, because, they, because they've made that wolf so scary as well. Yeah. They really, they've really built built that wolf up. Yeah. and Because it's like, yeah, they're building up, building up, building up. You only see it in small snippets because it's just, you know, a very kind of limited movement puppet. Puppet, sorry. But then you mm. see, yeah, you see something you haven't seen before on the, on the wall. And yeah. it's, oh, God. Yeah, and then so yeah, so then you're like, okay, so where, yeah, what, what are we gonna see next? Oh, his face! Look at that! Oh, oh God, that's so good! And then you hear it growling, and there it is. Oh, it's so good! It's simple, simple little storytelling. It's brilliant. I think that wolf's out of breath, isn't he? <laughs> oh, he's just relieved himself <laughs> I found you I can now pee finally <laughs> I've been busting for that pee for ages <laughs> been running for miles yeah, yeah no, those, that, those are the, that is the same face I make when I finally get to a urinal when I've been busting <laughs> I've only been holding it through a two and a half hour movie <laughs> oh. <laughs> The morgue. <laughs> here, kitty. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some food here. Is it it's good? I, I, I can't it's think not... of any any better way to put this. There's a lot of good tongue action in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> the, the animatronics, you can, their tongues really sort of <laughs> move with the words. <laughs> That's what I meant. I wasn't being dirty. Oh, bad guys always laugh, don't yeah. they? Yeah. I always remember that it, where his eyes go really wide there. Yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, he used to really freak me out. Because he jumps at him now. You yeah. see a bolt of lightning, he jumps at him. Yeah. Look at his eyes.
this is where where yeah this is where where you get to find out and, and i don't think there's any especially well as a kid i i really didn't figure that out until it's told to you now and suddenly you're like oh i get it <laughs> suddenly suddenly it all makes sense It could also be a reflection of what's happening, like politically at the time as well. You could say, like, you know, if it's in a sense of a remake where you've got this kind of like horrible stuff going on in the world, you've got recession, and everyone's kind of getting sad, depressed, and yeah. imagination's not really kind of taking over anymore. And, it's, and, yeah. it's an, and you could kind of all tie that into this kind of beast that is yeah. uh, there to crush your hopes and dreams. And yeah, absolutely, to to trample on if there's any. Any, any sense of any sense of, of, of happiness, some, yeah, something know, will come take it away, trample on it, take it away. It looks so freaky. It's such a scary puppet. Mm. It really is. Oh, but if you had to keep one prop from this entire film, what would you take as a director? If I, a prop, yeah. Because a lot of directors do take the stuff, don't they? Because I think Spielberg's got quite a few bits and bobs. But yeah, I'd probably take the Never Ending Story book. Yeah. That would be yeah, that yeah. would be the one, wouldn't it? Yeah. Or the or the necklace. Oh yeah, the, with the logo. You know, if we're talking things that you could realistically sneak out, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. necklace you could probably yeah. take. Because yeah. if because I because if it wasn't, I'd, I'd have that freaking wolf animatronic, <laughs> and I'd, I'd have it at my front door. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, <laughs> Every time the Jehovah's Witnesses yeah, turn no, up, I'm about I, to say I, that. I freaking, Always knocking I at my door. I, I go, I go have it open and have him say, "Welcome <laughs> to my abode." Oh, Here we wow. go. Look. <laughs> and every time I'm at the door, I just go, "Bleh!" Yeah, <laughs> just yeah, like, blah. Put it near him. <laughs> that is a fat yeah. wolf. Look how big yeah. it is. Yeah, Lurks like in death throes. <laughs> it's like it's God, like twitching, it's like twitching. It's for kids, you know, um, you, suitable for all. It's so funny if you grab, like, the stone, sort of bashing its head in, like, repeatedly <laughs> yeah, for, like, yeah, ten yeah. minutes. Die! 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 die. <laughs> so now this is... Uh, uh, that would be an old trick they put probably employed yeah. on, like, Thunderbirds, where you'd have an underwater yeah. scene where it's kind of... Uh, yeah, basically, there's... Oh, a, there's a, a, <laughs> they had to cross-dissolve yeah, that yeah, yeah, twice. Make, so they could pick it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's underwater, so you can get away with it. <laughs> so that would literally be, yeah... a. a f- in a in a studio, fan blowing on it. They're just, they're I think just... they, they they turned the set for this. Yeah. Sorry, they turned the set. They literally had a contraption to turn it. Oh, what for, the, yeah, for this he, stuff? Yeah, yeah, on. yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a big gimbal, isn't it? Big, yeah. Uh, good old classic. Yeah, it's got the, a sort of weird stretched yeah. lens. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the Supergirl crush. <laughs> yeah, blatant wig on the stunt man. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that wig. Is awful. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. It's like a dead cat on his head. <laughs> you just want it to fall off. But yeah, it's like, great. Look, it's a great effect, though, isn't it? It's amazing. So, it's still all those still... rocks are giant, like potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so you didn't use those as spuds and stuff in like Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, the, the asteroid feels. Yeah, there's some, yeah. There's some potatoes in the background. Right? <laughs> Although in the background of one of the uh, one of the shots in Return of the Jedi in the space battles, there's a there's Ken Ralston's trainer. Oh, really? Shoe. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, he went Michelle. nuts one day because there's so many elements in that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but don't don't relax too much, mate. The whole the whole planet's gone. Look, <laughs> right? Look, this this stuff's gorgeous. Look, that's great, isn't it? These model asteroids. That's a sort of mad thing around. out of Terry Pratchett's world. Yeah, like, yeah, world totally. Sort of yeah, thing. it's just it's totally going in that sort of realm, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, the sad music here. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this this was all the stuff when I found... when I Again, I don't know if it's true, but when I found out ILM did do work on this, this was the stuff that I assumed they did. Because yeah. I, just, I just think there's a quality to this that's that's beyond what mo- most of the other opticals were doing. Mm. But I could be totally wrong. Not the fact. I'm not here to educate. I'm here to... Just speculate, speculate. <laughs> yeah. right. speculation I'm, just a, I'm just a mate watching a film with you. I'm not. I don't. I don't really know what I'm talking about. I didn't I make a bloody thing. About. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't make it. 
I love how like uh, the castle's just hidden behind a rock. Do do do. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Suddenly the, the theme kicks in, and, <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, the whole the there is, there is, is on apparently sound asteroid. in space." <laughs> yeah, what well, cool series. Here we go. There you go. Blah blah blah. blah, blah, blah. blah, blah, blah. You can play that, can't you, Brad, on your yeah. on a keyboard? Yes, I've, I, I have found myself <laughs> on the odd evening. Do you do requests? <laughs> <laughs> I usually work these things out. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I used to play this, on, and, and, and the other theme as well, the, the Klaus theme. Mm-hmm. I, I think I could play it. I haven't done it for a while. The 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 um the palace is a little bit like from a distance, a bit like Supergirl's. Yeah, home world, isn't yeah, it? That sort of yeah. Sort of glowing kind yeah. of structure. In, in a space. In a what? Sp- yeah, yeah. Well, between outer and we inner are, space. We're, yeah. Yeah. Earth is in outer space. We are in inner space. We're inside Martin Short. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's always the thing I always remember always always struck out to me this film is, is, is how unsubtly the score would like just fade out <laughs> yeah it's like give it of that it's yeah like, <laughs> almost like like every time they had the score there was a real change so they had to yeah had to change it yeah that was a thing boys and girls back in the day when you when you had films on reels you, you couldn't have music go over a real change because you would literally be changing to a different reel and the sound would blip yeah, yeah. When you have changeover dots appear, the wondrous mechanical, photochemical world that we no longer live in. I think the princess wasn't she like a a dance or or something like that, the ballet or something. She oh. as a kid she freaked me out because I couldn't figure out how old she was supposed to be. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm like. Whoa. Yeah, she looks like a a dancer, isn't she? A ballet student. Not that there's a, a cliche look to them. But. <laughs> she looks like who's the lady who plays? Um, you, you've seen um, Red Dragon, right? Oh, uh, the the blind lady. In yeah, there. Um, I can't remember her bloody name. It looks like her as a child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a funny spoof on this online with this guy who's basically playing a tray and he comes in and says, it's great, basically say he's got some sort of infection with his dick or something. Yes. <laughs> and he goes, look what the nothing gave me. <laughs> but if you put it, I think it's Adam Ray, Never Ending Story. So if you're listening, check All it right. out. He's a good stand-up comedian. Okay, I'll have a look yeah. at that. He looks a bit like Kylo Ren here. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you did. You saw him in the mirror. Okay, here we. Go. This is so. This is where she she explains the concept of never end story, right? Yep. <clears throat> this this is where if it was a re, if it was remade, this would be the film's only f bomb. Yeah, fuck. coming up. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. With the kids reading the book, it's fucking Chucky. <laughs> it's the twelve A. Yeah, this is where she says he's part of the never-ending story. Yeah, see, others are sharing his. They were, as in us, us, the audience, we were with him. 
That's impossible, yeah. Brad. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, that's what it is. <laughs> but who's watching us? Yeah. Oh my God. Someone is watching us. YouTube's going to be yeah. watching us or yes. listening yes. to us. See? Oh, my see? God. It's one see? big loop. It it's is. Always, oh, it's oh the never-ending story. Jesus We're all part Christ. of it. Now. We're now stuck in the never-ending story. Yep. Jesus Christ. Hello, Falcor. Yep. What are you doing in there? <laughs> Christ. Yeah. See, that's what, it, that's what it means. It's not a story that doesn't end. It's a story that doesn't stop being told or read or participating in. My God. Oh, that's I, like, I love that. <laughs> Kaboom. Yeah. Kaboom. <laughs> Take that, Spud. Oh, mm. <laughs> yes. Barbara. There you go. <laughs> Shouts um, out the window. <laughs> Bernard Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> Bernard. <laughs> Atreyu fell. <laughs> yeah, because he gives he gives um, her his mother's name, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Which we don't know. Yeah, he's already mentioned it in the movie, hasn't he? That she had a she had a lovely name. So, the, so right, she's looking at him, looking at us. He's looking at her, looking at us. We're you know we're 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 on the line here. We're part of this. It's really freaky. Yeah, when you think about it, I think it's it's brilliant. I love it. Little girl does a good job here with the emotional. Oh bit. no, yeah, yeah. no, really she's good. really good. She yeah, is really good. Here we go. Oh, what's that bit of score there? Is, sounds a bit different to everything else. Yeah. It's like moonshine. Nah, rah, rah. Yeah. <laughs> what? If anyone in the comment section knows what the name is, Leopard Pledge. <laughs> Then it goes dark. I also, yeah, because it all goes from the beginning, doesn't it? And he, he can create yeah. an everything story again. That's right, yep. Of course, the movie that Barrett Oliver in that I forgot to mention that is that is a big movie for me is Cocoon. Ah. He's the kid in Cocoon. Ah! Ron Howard's brilliant alien movie, which. Again, when did I show he, did people, he, did he direct the sequel that. as well? No, okay. no, you, <laughs> no, you. <laughs> I, remember, I remember the sequel being on quite a lot actually as a kid. Yeah, you. <laughs> you speak of that sequel. <laughs> Is it just called Cocoon: The Return? Cocoon: The Return. Yeah. Cocoon forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> never cocoon ending, and Robin. Never ending cocoon. <laughs> <laughs> cocoon begins. <laughs> the dark cocoon. The dark cocoon. <laughs> Big trouble in a little cocoon. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Big Cut trouble in a little cocoon. <laughs> Winning lottery ticket. <laughs> You have to recreate it. So I, I believe. So I believe in the book that he recreates Fantasia, and then, become power and, then, and then rules it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> rules it like he a doesn't dictator. Do, he doesn't really do that in the sequel. I believe. Just, I I think that I haven't read it. I don't know. I might be mistaken, but from hearsay, that's what I've heard. That'd be amazing. <laughs> See, that's that's the sequel we we really want to make. Bastion the bastard it becomes all about greed. Yeah. Here we go. Did 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 music kicks in. Yeah. One of the worst. One of the worst line readings ever. That. It's like, what are you doing, you poor little kid? Barrett Oliver. Do it again. Take fifty. 
It's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's fucking freezing yeah. up here. <laughs> it's like the nothing never was. Yay. See, look. Everyone's okay. See? It's all fine, kids. Don't have to cry anymore. The horse will be back as well soon. I don't I don't suppose it's appropriate to do any spoilers for a, a big movie that's that was released this weekend. Mm, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> no, you won't do it. Yeah. I got fucking told off of giving spoilers of the things. Thirty years old. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Fucker people. What the hell can you spoil with it though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's <laughs> disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been great, isn't it? Because yeah, yeah. the, the the middle one, he's got a great reaction because they chase him, <laughs> yeah. they chase him, then they and then they all think he's gone, and he just goes, <laughs> and his yeah, face right, yeah. just kind of lights up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where is this? I can't. Is it Chicago, New York? Um, yeah, I don't know. There they are. <laughs> Scares the hell out of everyone. Military come out, take them out. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. I'm out of right. breath. I'm out of breath. We've lost him. Oh. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> He's slowly going to get him. There's a tower in the background that looks a bit like Seattle Tower. But, yeah. But I only caught it in the corner of my eye, so I might be mistaken. <laughs> and then we think, because it now has a narrator come on now. Yeah. We think, we think maybe it could have started with a narrator. Because it's a story. Yeah. I think that, yeah... Y- if you want a narrator, start and end with a narrator, um, or don't have one at all. Um, it's like you know, like the Pete Postlethwaite thing with Dragonheart. So it just comes out of nowhere, as opposed to something like Gremlins, where you have Hoyer Axton start the story yeah. and end the story. Mm. Voice over, you know, it fits, it works because it ends there with that. They're kind of implying that they did well. They, they there was no intention for a sequel because he says, "Yeah, that's have great adventures till he returned home." So it yeah. doesn't imply that he went <clears throat> evil. Yeah, no, no goes, exactly. But yeah. I always kind of before yeah. the sequel came out, I was, I was like, "Oh, they're gonna do a sequel" because it says like that's, that's a story for another time, yeah. or whatever. Story and um, another time. yeah, story. So they can't be bothered with that bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can't, can't be bothered. <laughs> yeah, have, you, have you seen the music video to this? Oh, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, like years ago. I did a. I think I did a pitch for a music video for Lamar years ago. Did you? Yeah. Never got it. Didn't get it. <laughs> Didn't get it. Lamar, thank you. No, that's, that's still a great film, No Reading Story. It is like the, it is like one of the sort of... It's I very... The nostalgia yeah. and 80s, No Reading Story is putting like in the sort of the top 10 of sort of ones that kids grew up on, yeah. isn't it, really? It's, it's, one of those, it's one of those ones that it's it's dated. It shows its, it shows its time. Yeah. It's not as timeless as things like Willow and stuff like that. Mm. But, but it... it, it but More than makes a, up there, for that. There's a charm with, uh, to that. charm yeah. heart and heart. Um, there's a charm to it. And it's daring moments as well, you know, yeah. with uh, kind of getting away with the horrors and the sadness that well, comes from yeah, the kids' well, like, film. Like we said, the, tone, the tonal vocabulary that you, you could get away with in these days is, was, you know, you could really abruptly go from one thing to the other and just just the audiences just went along for the ride. And yeah. You, Amatronic engineers, Bob Keane. That rings a Bob Keane. Yeah, that rings a yeah. bell. Yeah, Bob Keane. Yeah, stuff like Bob Keane was, yeah, it was um, yeah. Um, oh, image animation, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, based at Pinewood, I believe. Yeah. Well, well, well I worked there anyway. I think he was around. Do, do, do. Our reflex. Techno vision. Our reflex music. Anamorphic lenses. Techno vision. 
Eastman Kodak, yeah. So yeah, I mean, some of the optical work is a, a little bit dated, but um, but some of the some of the false perspective and and front projector stuff is pretty pretty amazing. Oh, it's very impressive. Like the yeah. matte, matte, I think the matte paintings to me, were yeah, just really yeah. I, that, it was and funny. Yeah, I didn't realize how oh, I, I'd forgotten how good they, how were, good they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and all the sort of stuff where you got like the, the, the liquid in the the paint in the in the in the water sort of yeah. this kind of weird clouds yeah. and stuff. Yeah, very clever, very kind of imaginative visual yeah. effects. Um, but yeah, it's still. Still, still holds up in in some places, but yeah, you know, as you say, kind of inherent of eighties kind of technology. Yeah, but there's a charm to it. There's a charm to all that. Yeah, yeah. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the commentary. Um, Brand yeah. is back. We're doing some <laughs> new stuff for the channel this Brad week. He's is doing, back. He's back. He's uh, he'll, sorry. He'll be on fixing post flashback with Richard discussing Gremlins Two. Yay! Yeah, yeah. Another Joe Dante one, <laughs> Mister. <laughs> welcome to the men's room. <laughs> And I think also, also Brad's joining us for some Star Trek comedy, Star Trek Into Darkness. Yes, we've been, yes, uh, yes. And uh, yes. probably in a couple of weeks we'll come, we'll come back yeah. and do Star You'll Trek Beyond. You'll hear me not being quite so uh, happy-go-lucky with that. Oh, no, <laughs> this is going to be fun, this is going to be fun. Yeah. Okay, everyone, take care. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>